I uh, hope you guys are enjoying your summers. We've got a fantastic uh, event here lined up today with the Sago team. We have Noah, we have Yako, we have Eli. Um, and of course, we have, as always, uh, all the way from New York, we have Josh Greenstein, who's with the IWPA, the Israeli Wine Producers Association, who's going to MC the event. I'm uh, glad we could uh, get this rescheduled and we have our our team happily all over the uh, countryside and throughout the Judean hills of uh, Israel. Um, Yaakov, we have in, live in the vineyard and we have live at the cave. Uh, for those of you who don't know the history of the cave and the history of the wonderful coin, we're going to learn a little bit about that today. And we have uh, Noah, those of you who don't know Noah, has, if you've been to the winery and visited uh, Psygoat at their old location, yes, old location, Noah might be a familiar face to you guys. And she's going to be showing us around the new building today, which is really, really exciting. We all wish we could go visit there very, very soon. Um, so good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello, Yako. How are you doing today? Hi, great. How are you? Good. What's going on? Where are you? Uh, we are just uh, walking here around in our vineyards. You can see the, the Shiraz grapes. Actually... Just take a hit. You can take a look. Wow. You see? Yeah. I believe in a two weeks it's going to change the color from green to to red and then black. So actually we are now in the Shiraz vineyard. It's going the coming peak is going to come from this vineyard. Wow. And Remind me, this is the vineyard right next. This is your this is your front yard and backyard, right? You're a lucky man. Exactly. In a minute, you're going to see the the front yard, and you go and uh, actually that was the uh, where the winery starts. We start the winery 2003, about uh, 17 years ago. Uh, we start with 3,000 bottles. You know, very very small, very just like a hobby. In a minute, you're going to see where we used to live. It was, uh, I'm always saying that it's the most ancient house in Judea and Samaria because it's a train trailer that was built, uh, I think it was built in America, in USA, and the Americans sent it to fight the Nazis in 42. And from there, I don't know how it's end up here in Israel. Uh, here, you can see, take a look. This is, this is where we used to live uh, almost uh, 15 years. Here you can see the uh, the winery, and then after uh, after about um, 10 years, 12 years in 2010, we moved the winery and we built our house in the ancient winery. It was just a small, small, small warehouse, and now it's a beautiful house. Each one of you really welcome to come and take a look, and you see all around it's our vineyards. This is the Cabernet Sauvignon vineyard just here. This is the Chardonnay just uh, behind the pool. And this is the Shiraz. Hey, Yako, is it fair to say that you're one of the few guys with a chateau in the middle of Israel? Yeah, you know, it's a good point because in Israel, it's not like in Europe and actually not like in, in the United States that you can, you can build the winery with or in your vineyards. Right. Uh, it's a little bit difficult here because of the laws and everything. You know that uh, Jewish people like lands. So uh, <laughs> so the, the, we have a lot of laws, different, uh, it's complicated. So however, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but, uh, but you're right. Here we are just in the middle of our vineyard and take a look now, it's, uh, it's, almost, it's, it's actually summer here in Israel and uh, supposed to be warm, but you know, this is the big, the, the big problem with the Zoom that I cannot explain to you the weather through the Zoom, but it's really nice. It's really windy. You know, it's just so amazing, like you said, to be able to wake up every morning. I, I can only imagine how much better your cup of coffee is looking out into the vineyards every morning. It must be, you know, awesome. Yeah, I always say to my friends that uh, my dream was if I can walk, I used to walk, you know, every day from, 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 from sunrise to sunset. And Bezrat uh, Hashem, one day I can came, came back again to the, to the vineyard walk because this is really it's the most beautiful and nice uh, thing you can, you can think about. 
Can you maybe tell us a little bit about what we're about to walk into just since we have some great quality outside? Yes, uh, we are going to see the what, where we actually we start. Everything starts from. Uh, this is a, it's an ancient cave. This is the road, I don't know if you can see here. This is the road that uh, uh, we made in order to get to the vineyards. You, you see the vineyard just behind me. When we make that road, we hit the rock. We hit the rock, we feel that there is something inside and we found ancient cave. Cave from the days of the second temple, 2,500 years ago. And you know, our grand, grand, grandparents used to make wine here. Come, I will. I hope you can uh, you can see it. We're going now inside the cave. Everybody, duck, dove a duck. Amazing. Josh, can can, can you see the, the can you see the, can you see it? Yeah, it's beautiful. We see the barrels. We see the, the the stone. What kind of stone is this that we're looking at? Okay, this is a limestone rock. Take a look. I will go now very close because now the vineyard is really above us. I will go now to the rock and you really can see on the top of the rock, it's like now we are underground. You can see the roots, the roots of the vines. Take a look how long they can go deep. You see here, all, all the rocks are full with roots. I don't know wow. if you can see it through the zoom. Yeah. So, so what, what's, what is really special in our area and, and in our land is that the roots of the vines can go deep, about almost 90 feet long. They go to find uh, what we call food. They go to find minerals. They go to find water. They're going to find humidity <clears throat> because, you know, this is what they need in the hot Israeli summer and they really can go very deep. The stone is a limestone rock. Limestone rock, it's a very soft rock. You can see a lot of cracks inside the rock. So this is where the roots go and, and they can find it. Because of that, it's really so special. And they knew it in those days too. 2000 years ago, they knew it. And they choose, always, they choose caves to make wine. Why? Because here, the temperature, it's really cool. It's really nice. Uh, and during the fermentation process, you can keep the wine uh, not to become vinegar. You see that stone? Take a look above. Have an axle. Go from, I will show you now the stone. You can see now the stone. This is the weight. Do you see? This is the weight. You see that stone? They made a hole here and a hole here. And then they lift it up. And that was the weight in order to put the pressure on the vineyard, on the, on the grapes, to get the wine out. So this is an ancient wine press. What was the when, winery called in ancient times? When we found, when I found the cave, the cave was full with mud, almost, almost up to, up to the top. Up to the top of the cave, it was full with mud and rocks, you know, for 2000 years. We need to, to dig, we dig very deep into the rock and I found, we found here clay and pots and, you know, a lot of things. And also we found that ancient coin. I don't know. Here you go, Yaakov. Well, you could talk a little bit about it. So, yeah, on one side of the coin, you can see this side, you can see a wine leaf. Do you see? And this is amphora. This is a, actually ancient wine, ancient wine bottle. On the other side, this is an ancient wine leaf. Do you see like five? Yes, you see, I mean, I hope you can see the leaf. And it's written here in ancient Hebrew, for the freedom of Zion. Why? Because that coin made in the great revolution against the Romans. Year 67, don't forget that year, 67, 67 BC. So almost 2000 years later, in 67, you know, six day war, we came back to our homeland and we came back to the same places that our grand, grand, grand parents, you know, fight the Romans. They try to kick them out from the land. Actually, they failed. You know, they they failed. They couldn't do it. But Baruch Hashem, after almost 2,000 years, we came back to that magnificent land. Those lands around me, what I just showed you, 
it was it was a desert it was empty nothing was growing here nothing you know and everybody tried everybody tried every every you know the romans the babylonians the greeks the, 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 the every 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 pop sent his army to conquer the land and try to to do something and of course to produce wine nobody succeed because we believe that this is part of what you know the bible promises us that if we are not going to behave we are going to be kicked out from our from our land but 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 god is not going to give to somebody else that land till we will come back and 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 that was the miracle and i remember first year when we start to make wine uh, you know michel roland came to came to here and the famous michel roland you know the famous wine advisor and he says and he came here and take a look and he says yeah yakov you look like a good guy you look very nice you going you you wasting your money and you wasting your time because nothing is going to go over here and i remember four years later first harvest we make our first wine i sent that wine to vinali you know to the big competition in 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 in, in paris in france and we got a gold gold medal noah where are you tell us a little bit about where you're from hello everybody um hey. Two seconds, I'm going to switch the camera that you could see where I'm located. We are at the new residence of Sagot Winery, our new home, which is larger, nicer, really amazing, surrounded with this biblical um, scenery. One second, here we go. Let me switch the camera. Okay, so this is, you could see here, this great place that it's like, um, it's really designed to be as a lodge like the pilgrims lodge that used to be at the biblical times coming towards jerusalem at the holidays they used to park here so we built the winery in this position combining the old the history the ancient with the new modern technology and equipment in about a week or two we are transferring all the winery um the stainless steel vats the winer the barrel the wine everything will be here at this location which I'm entering right now um, here I don't know if you could see anything now but this is a very very big hall will be equipped and of course we'll have tons of wine and at this moment we have here events we have here tours people can come here during the summer during the winter we have here during the winter events that can include the about 450 people and in the summer up till 600 people I'm going to show you the scenery which I'm going right now but in the meantime you could see that everything here has a special design has a special touch of very ancient stone we see the rocks here that really makes the building here for example and we're going to go inside and also see the wine and this is the whole top place and where everybody makes the chupa. And soon I'll show you the, um, the village here. When I'm going here, there are a lot of Bible stories that took place at this area. This, and there, I don't know if you could see it from here during the, while I'm doing the video, but this Arab village just in front of me, it's called Muhmus. And here it is at this valley, There was a historical story of Jonathan's, Jonathan's battle called the Battle of Muhmus, Battle of Mihmas. And it happened here along to, along to about 3,000 years ago. And this place is not only wine-wise, but also historical-wise and Jewish-wise. Really what we want to do is to emphasize the connection between the history of the nation, the land, the Jewish, na- the Jewish nation, and the wine that we make. Because we believe that the wine expresses what the land has been given us. And now, I'm going to take you inside. So here we go, welcome. We really invite each one of you to come here to take a tour, to try, try some wine. This is our wine store and exhibition, for example. probably all know the Sinai, the Rosé, Wood Strummerner, Merlo, and more. You see here, everything is equipped and designed. 
with yeah. high end touch of Yaakov and Nama. I'm going to take you now down to our VIP. Um, Who did all room. the design work? Is this Yaakov and his wife? Yaakov and Nama, very creative, unbelievable people. This is Yaakov's nice wife, see. correct? Yeah. Yaakov. I'm going to take you now, before I take you to the special um, tasting room, this is our archive. You see here, it's also designed as an ancient room. See all the stones? They are really genuine bricks. All the wood here that we have on the, on the table, um, all the designs are really eucalyptus trees, olive trees. Everything is real. See, this is our archive. But you can have a special romantic even tasting. That's and awesome. you have here on the wall, uh, very ancient bottles from the beginning of the winery going through. You know, we started very small. We started with 3,000 bottles. And as of now, we make um, this predict this predicted summer will be about six hundred thousand bottles. Wow! And our projection for the next five years is to reach one million bottles annually. And for this, of course, we need very large, large barrel room, large stainless steel vats. And now, before we continue, you see everything here is designed and. See, even the walls has this great canes that were brought specifically here. I'm going to go down. I hope I have a reception here at the, at the stairs. Now we are entering our VIP tasting room that people can come here. They can have like a little, even have chef dinner, can have meals, can have events. This is the bar. Here you could see the um, table with this is a real 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 wood table everything here really i didn't do it so i could say beautiful. it because i end beautiful here here i can show you where our wine barrel room will be here this is huge i don't have a lot of light here but it's going to be here Perfect. at least one thousand bar barrels uh placed one stock of, upon another, right? And we are planning to grow. And of course, we really want all of you to come in, to visit, to enjoy, to taste a little bit of Israel in our wine taste. What are you drinking these days, Noah? Tell us a little bit about, I know you're drinking <laughs> something white and fresh. What are you drinking, the rosé? What are you up I'll to? I'll show you. Show me. So these are my fave for the summer. We have this, the Gewurztraminer, 12% alcohol. This is a semi-dry wine, so fresh, so aromatic, so fruity, that it really goes along with any summer food. And of course, my fave, this one. Rosé 2019, like a salmon, onion peel color. So good, so refreshing goes with meal, with food, even with cold cuts and roast beef. Really beautiful. Here, I'm going to show you here. We also have the Magnum bottle. This is 2014 at Dome. Comes in a special box. And of course, more. It looks absolutely amazing. Beautiful. It is. Can you tell us more about what's actually in the wine? I mean, cherries or smoke no, the, or... The, any apple. wine that we make, any wine that make only contains grapes. But the flavors only and grapes? the aromas, only grapes, 100% uh -huh. grapes. And of course, uh -huh. yeast that we use for the fermentation process. However, mm -hmm. all the aromas and flavors that you feel when you drink the wine comes from the process of the fermentation from the barrel that give you a hint of okay. uh, sometimes fruit, sometimes flowers. The human mm -hmm. brain is mm -hmm. so amazing that the in our mind, in our brain, the, mm -hmm. the location that is really in charge of the smell and the location that really in charge of the memory are right next to each other. So if you drink something that really reminds you of an apple, you will feel it as an apple. What are the barrels made of, most of them? Most, I mean, all of them are made from um, oak, 
some of them and most of them that we use come from uh, French, French oak barrels. We have some from Hung Hungary that we use for our um, Chardonnay. Our Chardonnay, 50% of our grapes is being aged in Hungarian oak for about six months. That gives it some depth, some softness, some aromas, vanilla flavors, and all, and etc. Hey, hey um, so so we're all, you said that, that the restaurant's open for parties and stuff. What are, can you give us some other dates of when you guys are expecting to open full time and so we can yeah, actually? Yes, soon. I guess in I guess in about a month, even less, two weeks, month. We're going to be operating as full coverage of restaurants, um, tours, wine tasting, special events, anything. And even today, if you want to come, we will host you. We will do, you know, we're open for visitors anytime. By the way, I'm going to show you here, even though the, when Yaakov was showing you the vineyards and the cave, this is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away driving from here. I just want to say that we're also only about 15 minutes away from Jerusalem. We're not so far. It's, of course, the uh, Benjamin region area, but we are really close to Jerusalem. And the vineyards is also, we have the VIP tours in the cave, but soon, very soon, what I'm showing you now, we're going to have some vineyards, lo local vineyards. And when they grow, we're going to have local grapes. So, and when we make chupa and stuff like that, so we have this little garden area that the bride seats and enjoy it. I don't know if you could see it closely. Wow. We can do a whole yeah. photo shoot there. Of course, everything. Of it. <laughs> yeah, that looks yes. great. I can't, I can't wait to see it. The one thing I'm going to miss, yes. I mean, it looks like it's a great view there, but the view from the... Uh... Noah, you guys also are making some great white wines as well. I know you guys make a Chardonnay. You guys have done a Viognier in right. the past. You guys have experimented right. with some different stuff. Can you... Right. What other white wine are you drinking? Uh, we have Viognier, Chardonnay, Wurtstraminer, and Rosé. This is what we have of the white. And it really depends what I eat, you know? Um, if I eat um, only fish and, and salad and stuff like this, I will definitely go with the, the Chardonnay. And the cyanide can go with anything, by the way, what you're holding in your hand. What have you seen in the past five years with the, with the rosé business at, at the winery? Oh, the rosé really came in front of the stage, really. You know, and I see the more we are, I mean, five years ago, rosé was not, you probably Dovi can say, but rosé was not as sold as today. Rosé right. is really a number one seller because it's a summer. It's a summer wine. It's beautiful with a very large variety of food. And it goes so well because also the color is really appealing. Noah, did you open up any old vintage wine while you were stuck at home painting? <laughs> First of all, thank you. I, ha I had so much wine. Here, look at the color. I had so much wine and I drank all my Cabernet Franc and Pique. <laughs> <laughs> it cost me a lot of money, but I enjoyed it every minute. And for those of you who don't know what she does, that, she's a fun painter on the side. So for those of you who have a little creative <laughs> side, she does some fun creative stuff also. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, so look, look at this rosé. Look how beautiful it looks in the, the Here, I'm gonna show you know, one light second. there. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, it looks, you know. Look at the color. David, like you said, to enjoy that bottle in that courtyard right now, it's just, you know, there's something special about that. So for those of you who are not there, I think everyone should open up a bottle tonight, watch back this video, or close your eyes now and take a snapshot of the scene and, and, and wish we were all there and drinking the wine together. David, what have you been yep. drinking from Sago besides this this rosé? Do you have like a specific grape or a specific vintage? Maybe something that stood out in your eyes from Sago over the past couple of years with, with with you working with them? Uh, so I really love the new Malbec uh, that was just recently introduced in the U.S. market. Um, really fantastic wine. Uh, the Peak also. I remember when it came out. Uh, just a great wine that's made for Israel. You know, based on the terroir, based on on just like using the grapes that are supposed to be grown uh, in Israel. So that that's a fantastic blend. Uh, the Sinai, yeah. I think they did a great okay. job with that, especially bringing it at the price point. Fantastic wine. 
And uh, I have to agree with uh, Noah, the Cab Franc, delicious Cab Franc. So there, there's the staples, the wines, you know, that everybody buys all the time, the, like the Cabernet, the Merlot, the Adome. Those are like, everybody knows those wines. I think some of the newer wines, the Viognier also is great, great white wine. I mean, a lot, a lot of good stuff. I like what they did with the packaging that Noah mentioned before. So, I mean, overall, just a great winery. I think for us right now, it's, it's one of the fastest growing uh, in terms of gaining popularity in, in the U.S. market. It's always been considered one of the best boutique wineries, if not the best boutique winery. And, and you could just see now, like, everybody's gravitating towards this brand. They really uh, address the market and all the people that drink wine. You can find something at every price point. They even came out with a Divine, which is like a sweet wine for the U.S. market, the port wine. They really, really do a great job with making sure that if you want to support Israel, you want a delicious wine, Mavushal, not Mavushal, whatever it is that you want, they have. So it's, I think it, they've been doing a fantastic job. And I'm really, really excited to, to see what else is coming. You know, like the Gordstraminer Noah mentioned. I just want to add one more word regarding our, um, our blends that, you know, it's not a, a formula that we do every year. Every year, it's a, it's a craft work. It's an art. Our winemaker, after each wine was aged in barrel for about a year, he takes samples from each barrel and he really tries to get to this really balanced, deep, rich blend that will give you a great taste, but will not kill your stomach and that you want to go to the second cup when you eat and drink this wine. So every year the percentage of the blend is changed. One, this year, for example, the Edom 2018, the Merlot is 37%, the Petit Verdot is 32 and the Cabernet Sauvignon is 31 But last year, it was different. Also with the peak, the Syrah, Petit Syrah and Morverd are changed. And this is what's so special because the flavor is similar, but each year has the uniqueness of what this land has been given us specifically that year, according to how much sun, how much air, how much water, how much, you know, everything, all this combined, all the terroir with the nature really creates this beautiful wine and blend. And, you know, the, the part for me that I love about working with Sagot is it's the coin. And, you know, a after, you know, learning the story and understanding the story and being able to walk into somebody's house and, and leave them this bottle, someone that maybe never had a wine from Israel before and show them this, it just, it's powerful. It delivers, it, the, the wine is delivered, but the story behind the coin for me to be able to walk in, I'm a storyteller. I like to tell a good story. And what the coin allows me to do and, and the platform that it gives me, it, it, it's amazing to be able to talk about it and tell the great story of not just Sagot, but the whole Israeli wine industry and how these people have been in the wine industry for so long now. It really does, Sagot really, really does tell the story of the Israeli wine, especially not the conclusion, just the next chapter of where they're at now that listen, they started out literally living in, in a, train tracks on a train car in the middle of the vineyard. Now they're on a winery. Now they grew into a bigger winery. And that sounds like the real story of the Israeli wine overall. It's growing and now it's real. And now it's in a real building in a real place and making real deal wines. Um, so that's my uh, two coins on two cents. <laughs> on well said, but Josh, but by the way, I don't know if you could see, but all the labels that we recently, I mean, a few years ago, we changed our labeling are designed as a cover of a book. What you said before really appeals to what we tried to do because this coin tells the story and the way it's designed is like a headline and under headline and a little strip. This mm -hmm. is like a book. It is. So once you get the Psagot, you really have the story, not only of the Psagot winery, but the story of the Jewish nation. And the two questions are one for Yaakov. In the beginning, you were showing some vineyards there. They, someone wanted to the Shiraz, someone wanted to know how old the vines are. And then uh, for Noah, someone wanted to know uh, what the hatcher on the restaurants is going to be. So the vineyards, we have uh, the oldest about 20, of, uh, 20, it's about 19 years. Uh, 20, uh, 20, about 19, 20 years. That's the oldest and the new, newest about 12, something like that. Thank you. And the hexer on the restaurant, Noah. So, the, by the way, the hexer on the wine is Badat. 
and on the restaurant it's going to be mahadrin it is mahadrin on on the meat on the on the on the dairy so it's it's high supervision 